Okay, so sorry. What the problem is? You know what the problem is? I did. What was that? Wrong password. Hello, hello. Okay, okay, start, start. Hi. Oh, it's on my hand. Okay. Well, hello, campers. Hi, sorry that it was late. That was my fault. I was trying to find the right password and was using the wrong one, but I figured it out and here we all are. So, yeah. You're perfect and wonderful. Thank you for all being here today. <laughs> so, um, we're going to talk about the Pacific Ocean. Who is the host for the meeting today? That's that would be me. Hi. So, I'm going to meet you. <laughs> I'm Yarn Over. And I'll be uh, teaching you guys how to do crochet today. Um, do we have everybody in the session right now? Everybody's not in the session. Oh, well, all the people who are invited, I mean. Uh, no, not yet. Okay, cool. So somebody tells me when to start, right? <laughs> I'm assuming. I say we could start at like 11.05. That gives okay. like more minutes. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah, give them more time. Well, in the meantime, uh, anybody have any kind of like weird questions about yarn crafts? <laughs> no, I don't have like... so long since I lost mine when trying to travel to a beach. Oh no, were you able to find some new yarn? It's at our no, house. No, probably at our house. Fair enough. <laughs> or my um, still it. That's what I think happened. Oh, well, I've lost a lot of projects over the years, so. My brother wants to learn how to knit, and he keeps asking me for things to knit with. I don't know why. Well, um, I will say that once people find out that you know how to do um, something cool like knitting or crochet, you get a lot of requests from friends to make things. And uh, I don't get what's going on. as long as you have free yarn, it's kind of cool. And as long as you love them, uh, it's great. But sometimes those projects can take a really long time. So it's a labor of love. Yeah. All right. I heard a, I don't know what's going on from someone. So I think that was Rosa Moonfire. All right. Well, we are here to learn crochet. So we're waiting for everyone to join the room. And I think Imagine looks like she has a question. Yeah, go ahead, imagine. Um, what are we making? Well, we are basically taking the crawling steps to learn how to crochet. So we're making something called a swatch, which is basically just a small piece of fabric. And you can go ahead and use that for a little, you know, doll blanket if you wanted to, a very small pot holder. <laughs> but basically we are just learning how to do the crochet stitch so that we can go ahead and make more items later that are bigger and more intricate. But we're just kind of learning the foundation stitch or how to make bigger projects later. It's something that you really have to grow on. And I have a couple of projects that I'm gonna go ahead and show everybody kind of the diversity that you can kind of use this uh, craft for. So I make a lot of hats, baby blankets, stuffed animals, um, I have some fingerless gloves that I made. Yeah, and I'll be sharing all those with the, the group. Everybody's not here. Yeah, I, I, I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> and I will make that mistake many more times. <laughs> oh yeah, Shamrock does it all the time. Yeah. I enjoy it. <laughs> when, okay. I, when I yeah. act like in doing something and I hear the words nobody and everybody I think of the person I don't think of 
every single time now. I don't know why. Well, because you've been immersed in this beautiful day camp program all week, so, but I wasn't, so I'm not on that mindset yet, and I need to be. So thank you for keeping me on track. <laughs> yes, so it's 11.07, so I guess we could start now. Yeah, sure. People um, I don't really know how many people are in the group, by the way. I'm a little... Uh... There's 17 right now. Oh, okay. Hello, all 17 of you. I guess there's this little thing right there. Okay, so my name is Yarn Over, <laughs> and I will be teaching everybody how to do um, what is called the single stitch for crochet today. Crochet is um, similar to knitting, except for the fact that you only use one hook, and it has a little divot in it, unlike a knitting needle, which is straight and you use two. And each stitch that we make is completed before the next one is made, whereas knitting, you have multiple stitches open at the same time before they're completed. Um, so I probably learned to crochet when I was about eight years old with my Oma. So that's my grandma from Holland. And she came from a long line of crocheters and knitters, and she knows how to do everything under the sun. She's fantastic. Um, so that's kind of my experience with it. Last probably two years, um, I started doing a lot more things with crochet. I found a really good um, online community that helped me expand what I was doing. And YouTube is such a great resource, and I was really able to kind of like start doing more stuff and learning more stitches and doing these really intricate things. So, some things that we can do with crochet you can make a lot of shapes. So, I have little gloves that I've made. This is pretty much all made out of um, a single stitch that we will be working on today. So that one's pretty cool. I've made bunny hats, which is awesome. Little octopus hats, inspired by maybe the Kraken new hockey league that we have here in Seattle. It has tentacles and a little uh, thing that you can stick some bags in for its body. So that's cute. Make a lot of shawls and then um, Kit Kat's daughter just had a baby. So I'm working on a lovely baby blanket for her, for baby Maeve. And that pattern is actually called the virus. <laughs> so I thought it was uh, appropriate for the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> However, that uh, pattern has been around since the 60s. Um, yeah, so that's just kind of like the tip of the iceberg for what you can do with crochet. There's so much more. People make sweaters and pants and bathing suits and awesome stuffed animals and all sorts of cool stuff. Oh, is there a cat? <gasps> Sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> um, yeah. So we're going to go ahead and talk about a couple things with what you guys got in your crochet kit. So you have this thing, it's called a yarn cake, and I'm using um, one that uh, I think most of you have. This is a acrylic wool blend, and you'll notice that your yarn comes out of the middle of it. And the reason that we do that is because it's much less likely to get um, all tangled up if we pull from the center of a yarn cake or sometimes they're called skeins or a ball of yarn, any of those words work. Next we have crochet hook. Mm. And the hook part is the little divot that we have there. That is the actual like end of the hook. And that guy usually faces towards you. Um, there are two ways to go ahead and hold this guy. One is called the pencil hold, which is where you literally would hold it kind of similar to how you would a pencil with the hook facing towards you. The other way that you can go ahead and hold it is called a knife hook or a knife hold. And it's when you go ahead and kind of hold it like you were maybe cutting a steak or whatever your dinner. So follow your heart, try both ways while we're gonna go ahead and be doing this. 
I prefer the pencil bowl. That's what I've been doing my whole life. Every once in a while, I get wily and I try the other way and can't change. And that's okay. Um, so, we also have the ability to look at this guy. This is the beginning of your um, project. I went ahead and made a couple of rows for everybody to start on so that we would have a really good foundation. This guy is called your tail. It's not hooked to anything. It just doesn't really do anything. And then this guy that's attached to your yarn ball is called the working yarn. So the first thing I want everybody to do is just kind of take our little project. I want you to go ahead and stick your hook into the loop. And I want everybody to just kind of pull up. And then I want us to pull down. Doesn't matter if your hook's in there or not. I just want us to kind of feel around, get comfortable with that. Know that we can't break this project. We really can't mess it up. Um, if you make mistakes, it's not a big deal because this is what we're going to do. We're going to just go ahead and do something called frothing. And it feels kind of nice too. You just take your working yarn, pop out a few stitches. Everybody just do that. Take out like six of them. Oh, yeah. Everybody take out a few stitches. So, like, make a mistake. All you have to do is pull on that working yarn and it will get rid of it for you. And then you can just start over. Easy. So, go ahead and stick your hook back in there. And I'm going to switch my camera mode real fast. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to work about five or six stitches together. Super, super slow. Really, really easy. And then we're going to go ahead and take a little breather, do a little stretch, do a little Q&A, and it's going to be a good time. Okay. Ah. All right, so I don't have the best webcam on the planet, but we'll make it work. And I just realized I need to mirror this image, I think. One moment. Video settings. Rotate. Pew, pew, pew. Is that right? No. Mirror? Yes, okay. Ah, that's not right. Morgan, I need help. <laughs> I don't know. It's not mirrored though. Sorry guys, technical difficulties because Yarn Over doesn't uh, internet very often. So I want that one? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And then just click off of it? Okay. I have a friend here to help me with my tech stuff, everybody, because I'm not good at it. That's not right though. Because I want it to You're show You're right handed. It, it looks correct to, to me at least. I don't. Like, is there a possibility okay. we could be seeing something slightly different than you are? I don't know. Well, we're going to roll with it. <laughs> I'm left-handed, so it's kind of hard if someone's doing it right-handedly. All right, well, so, Rosa Moonfire, I can explain how to do it left-handed I don't really you. get it. Can't I, I just go ahead and flip it the other are way you then? Are left-handed, I, I am left-handed, so, um, Yarnup, do you want me to explain it to her, how to do it left-handed at all? Uh, that sounds great, and okay. also, I My mom is left-handed, but, yeah, I okay. have headphones. The Rosa Moonfire, I'm gonna have to have you show me it, because I don't actually have anything with me to do it, <laughs> so it makes it a little hard for me to explain. So you would hold it the same way in your hand, but you would have it where the crochet hook is in your left hand and the yarn is going to be in your right hand. So I have a question. When you guys are looking at your screen, is your hook in your right hand? Like, is that what you guys see? Yes. 
Yes? Oh, okay. okay. Excellent. So in that case, if you're right or left-handed, either way, what you're going to do is take the hook and you're going to see this little series of V's at the top of your row. So you're going to put your hook into your loop, pull it down so that it's nice and snug, and then the way I like to hold my yarn is just oops, over my little index finger, under my middle finger and ring finger, and then over my uh, pinky, like that. However, it's really hard to do that when there's so many things kind of going on. So if you're not to that point, that's okay. We can always just not hold it and that's fine too for right now because we're just learning. So we go right underneath the two V's that are in that first row. And then we're going to go ahead and pull our yarn over the hook grab it with the mouth of the hook and pull it I can actually do that through. You then have two loops on your hook. You pull the yarn over your hook one more time and you pull through both loops. And don't worry, we're going to do this like five more times and then I have a visual aid because sometimes that helps people a lot too. So we're going to go ahead and take that our dominant hand, right or left, and we're going to go ahead and put it through the V. We're going to take our yarn, put it over the hook, and grab it with the mouth of the hook, and we're going to pull it through the V again. We now have two loops on our hook. We're going to pull, go ahead and yarn over again. And we're going to pull the yarn through both loops. Is this a good enough visual aid for everybody? Kind of head up and down. No. Seems like it's working okay for most of us. Nope, not over here. Not over here, okay. What can I be doing better for us visually? Anybody? Okay, well, we'll go ahead and do a couple more stitches here. We're going to go ahead and take our hook, go through both loops of the V, put the yarn over the hook, pull it through the V, we now have two loops on our hook again. We're going to pull the yarn over the hook again and pull it through both loops. And that completes our stitch again. And we'll go ahead and start a new stitch again. We're going to go ahead and go through the V. We're going to yarn over the hook. Okay, so see she goes through the V, she pulls it through one time. Pull it through the V. So we got two loops on the hook. V. Think of this one. Go ahead and put the yarn over the hook again. We go and over. we'll go through both the loops. Pull it through there, and then you do it over again. And you pull it through there. Okay, I did it wrong the first time. You were right. That, that was wrong. So you dive it in here. Dun, dun, dun. Pull it up. Through. All right. I'm going to go ahead and do another one here. This is Maddie and Katie's mom. I don't know if you can hear me. Hi. What can hey, I do for you? I'm left-handed. My daughter's right-handed. So we're going to bow out and I'm going to have my mom watch the video later and help her. <laughs> that you. sounds perfect. And um, <laughs> thanks sure so much. You can go ahead and do a private Zoom later if you would like to. That would be totally fine.
You guys have a good one. All righty. So we're going to go ahead and do a new stitch here. So. You can see the bees. One, two, three, four. Got a bunch of them on there, right? Go ahead and put my hook through the loop. I have it tight. We're going to go ahead and go through the V. We're going to yarn over our hook. We're going to go ahead and grab it. Pull it through the V. We have two loops on there. Okay, she's going to see another question. We're going to yarn over again, and we're going to go ahead and pull it through. Hey, that's okay. That's not what it means. Stop. Whatever has just happened in your crochet world with your project is okay. It is not broken. You are all doing an amazing job, just so we know. You're so, what we're going to do right now is take a little break to stretch our hands because one thing that happens when we're new to crocheting is that we get really, really tight in our hands and they can cramp up. And for good hand health, we're gonna go ahead and just let it go. It's also good for our brains. Let out a little tension. Go ahead and wiggle those guys around. Make them go way back, push your fingers back as far as you can. Oh, yes, that feels good. Okay. And then we'll go like this. Ready to train. Find them. Go ahead and push them out. Any weird negative energy that you have, just go ahead and push it away from yourself for right now. As crochet is anything that you want it to be, it's a stress reliever, it's a good thing to practice mindfulness, it's for self-expression. We'll go ahead and take our hands, take your palm, press your fingers back, ooh la la, feels pretty nice, and health is good, oh yeah. Go ahead and reach towards the sky, good breath, excellent. And we can go ahead and take some questions and see how we're feeling. Questions, comments, concerns. It looks like Shark uh, asked if you could show it slower on the V part. Yeah, absolutely, I can. So I'm hearing one request for slower on the V part. Any others? All right, that's it. Perfect. Well, that is just doable. <laughs> so, I'm going to go ahead and get this back on the other webcam real fast. All right. So when you're starting out with crochet, it can be kind of difficult to understand like what all the working parts of our stitch are um, because it's new and it's pretty intricate and it can be really overwhelming and that's totally fine. So with the V, let's see how focused can I get this? Okay, I feel like the camera on the laptop might be a little bit better. So you have your last stitch that you made and then right next to it, you know, slightly lower are all the Bs and they're basically the tops of the stitches that you had previously made on the other, the row below it, right? So that's what the Bs are. They're just tops of the previous stitches. So when I do this, just go ahead and get the V that is closest to your hook. And we put it under there. Yeah. Boop -a -doop. So that's under both of the little Vs. And then yarn over the hook. And we pull it through.
And then when we have the two loops on our hook, we yarn over again, and then we pull that working yarn through both of the loops. So how do we turn it around at the end of the line? Oh, you're already at the end. Excellent. That makes me so happy. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and work the rest of these stitches. There's not a whole lot for me until we get to the edge, and then we can talk about how to get it up to the next level. All right. So again, with going into the Vs. Went under both of those guys. Yarned over. Went back under through the Vs again. Now we have two loops on our hook. Yarn over again. Go through both loops. Go through the V. Grab our yarn. Pull it over, go through again, yarn over, pull through both loops, new stitch again, go through the V, yarn over, pull through, we have two loops on our hook, yarn over again, pull through both loops, that's the end of our stitch, new stitch, go through the V, Yarn over, pull the yarn through, two loops on our hook, yarn over again, pull through both loops, that's the end of our stitch. And then with our last V, go through that guy, sometimes it's a little bit harder, the tension is there because of going up on the other one. That didn't make any sense, it's all right. The point is, power through. All right, so I went ahead and went through the V, yarn over, pull through both loops. So if we are to the point where we have gotten to the end and we have all of our little stitches on there, looks nice and straight for the most part, we're gonna go ahead and do something called chaining, which is something that everybody loves to do. It is the easiest thing for crochet. And all you do is take your working yarn yarn over your hook and pull it through your loop just one time. And that is just called a chain. And I'm gonna go ahead and do it three more times. Oops. So that is the last stitch again on our row. All we do is yarn over the hook and pull it through the loop once. I'm going to take my stitch out and show us again. Again, this is the last stitch on our row. We yarn over a hook that's facing towards us and we pull the yarn through the loop. Then we just flip the working piece around so that we're going the other way. <laughs> And then we would go ahead and start on the next row. And all the chain does is give us um, the extra height to start the next row. And then we would just go ahead and start all over again. And we just do this back and forth, back and forth, like a little typewriter. Until we have a nice shaped square or humble rectangle, whatever you would like to do. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and do a couple more of these single stitches for us, and then we'll go ahead and talk about some things that I think make my crochet life easier. So we go through the V. We take the yarn, it's going over our hook. We're pulling it through the V again. We're going to take our yarn. Pull it over the hook again and go through both of our loops. And that's the end of our stitch. Again, we're going to go ahead and go through the V. Yarn 
yarn over our hook, pull it through the V. Got two loops on there. Go ahead and yarn over again. Pull it through both loops, and that's the end of our stitch. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and go through the V for our new stitch. Have our yarn, pull it over our hook. Good job, Bean. Looks awesome. Got two loops, yarn over, pull it through both loops. Anytime that you feel like you need to um, take a step back from your crochet project, now or in the future, um, in order to keep all of your stitches from coming out, just go ahead and take your crochet hook and lift it up to make a nice big loop. That way things are less likely to come undone while you walk away or you throw it in your bag for travel, what have you. Yeah. So, some things that I like to do when I'm crocheting are A, I like to take my yarn cake and I either throw it into a bowl, like a nice big kitchen bowl, especially if you have pets, because it will keep it from rolling around on the ground where all the dog hair is, which is uh, something I struggle with because my dog is very large. Or the cats will try to get it. Um, so if you have pets, put your yarn in a bowl, and that is a great crochet hack. Another great crochet hack is to put your hair up in a ponytail, especially if it is long, because A, I have crocheted my hair into my own projects before, and B, loose wily hairs will also wind up in my projects a lot. And that's totally fine. Um, I like to think of it as like, hey, you have a piece of me in this beautiful gift I made you. Um, but sometimes if you're selling a project or uh, entering it into the fair or something, then maybe you don't want your long, uh, blonde, luscious hair or whatever color hair you have in your crochet project. So also sometimes I have pulled out my hair on just being frustrated with my crochet projects. And also do not be afraid of failing at crochet projects as I have so many projects that have um, just gone sideways, haven't worked out, and that is totally okay. Um, I am going to actually show you guys the biggest yarn snafu that I have had, which is a complete disaster. <sighs> So I decided to make a sweater, cable knit sweater, and I was so excited. This is one of the sleeves. These are all the pieces. Um, this is a sleeve that's attached to the body and everything. And um, I did not measure my gauge very well with this. This is probably like a hundred hours worth of work and I did it completely wrong. It's the wrong size. It looks super wonky when I started putting it together and I'm going to take this entire thing apart. And then I'm going to reuse the yarn and try it again because <laughs> I really liked the pattern picture for it and I refuse to quit. <laughs> so um, yeah, like sometimes you have really big projects and they don't work out the first time and I learned so much putting it together even though I did it wrong. And that sucker is going to take forever to unwind. And that's just crochet sometimes. And that's totally OK. <laughs> um, so those are just some crochet hacks. Some other things that are more technical that make your life easier is how to hold your tension with your yarn. So for me, like I was saying, with my working yarn, which is getting a little bit tangled right now. It's OK, it's just a soft yarn. I like to go ahead and take the yarn and I put it over my little pointer finger, underneath of my middle finger and my ring finger, and over my pinky. And then I clamp down on it, kind of like a 
wildcat round. So what that does is it kind of allows me to have a medium tension. Tension is how like loose or how tight your yarn is going into your stitches. And so if it's nice and even, you're not pulling too hard and it's not super loosey goosey, that's kind of where you want to be. It would be called medium tension. And then that also helps me keep all of my working yarn off to the side. It's not going to get in my way and I can kind of hold what I'm working on with my thumb a little bit, which makes it so that I have a nice grip and everything is nice and kind of like straight and sturdy for me to work on while I'm crocheting. With my other hand, I like to go ahead and when I have my pencil hold, I kind of will hold whatever has already been worked on a little bit with my other fingers so that everything is kind of more stable. And the more that you kind of work the more you have, kind of have to grab on to. So those are things that make my life a lot easier. As you can see, I'm just cruising right now. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do a couple more of those stitches and then we'll stretch a little bit more. And we'll answer some more questions. I know this is a super long lesson and you guys are all doing great. Oop. Hey, there's my arms. All right. So with my dominant hand, with my little uh, crochet hook here, I'm gonna go ahead and take that guy, put it through the V. My yarn is kind of already in a great place when I have my hand in that tension lock to go ahead and just pull it through. It's kind of like a little shelf. It's already sitting there so I can kind of grab it instead of um, having it like that and having to really pull it over. So yeah, it kind of makes it a little bit easier if we hold it that way. But if you're not to that point, going ahead and, you know, pulling it over your hook is still totally fine too. Follow your hearts. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go through a V for our new stitch. Yarn over, grab that yarn, pull it through the V two loops on our hook, yarn over our hook again, and take that working yarn and pull it through both V's. Yay, a stitch. All right, going ahead and going through the V for a new stitch, yarn over the hook, pull it through the V. We have both loops on our hook, Pull the yarn over the hook again, take the working yarn and pull it through the two loops. Beautiful. And then when you have a good motion going, it kind of just looks like this. If you make your stitches um, very, very tight, it will be very hard to get your hook into them going on the next row. So one thing that new crocheters really need to work on is making sure that your stitches are on the looser side or else it will make your life a little hard and then you're gonna wind up doing that thing where we frog and take things apart like I will do a million times for a million hours with my large sweater that is wrong. <laughs> Yay. Hmm? Mm. Yeah, so relax the hands. Do not have like a, uh, don't try to choke your crochet hook. My hands are nice and loose. Spirit fingers, guys. Mm. Yeah. So, which speaking of, this is probably a good time to go ahead and Take our hands in case they are cramping up and go ahead and stretch those babies out again. Hello. Yay. Go ahead and take those suckers, push them out. I like to go ahead and get the shoulders involved. You can go ahead and throw those guys behind your head. Stretch out. Maybe 
you do one of these, pull the elbows back. That's always good. Do what feels right. If you have any awesome hand stretches that you guys know or arm stretches, go ahead and show them off. This is a great time to do that. That's right. Crochet is a physical labor of love. It involves all the body parts. You also want to make sure that if you're in a long crochet session that you get up and walk around because your bum will go numb. Make sure that you have good lumbar support. If you're sitting in a corner on a bunch of like sofa cushions, you know, like your body's going to probably cramp up at some point. You're going to lose some blood flow. So take care of our bodies while we're doing this craft. Stay hydrated. It's hot, you know, that sort of thing. Do we have any questions? Life questions are acceptable too. I just wanted to ask real quick, did you say this was a half stitch? Is that the name of it? This is a single stitch. Single stitch, okay. Yeah, it is, number one, it is the shortest stitch that you could probably make, besides something that's called a slip stitch, which is literally nothing. It's so short. And that's just used from getting from one place to another without adding pretty much any height. That's kind of a weird advanced question to answer. So um, there are so many stitches. Um, there's like a base of stitches. So you got your single crochet, double, and a triple. And then based off of those and their combinations, they'll go ahead and make um, specialty stitches out of those. So then you can make a moss stitch or a blanket stitch or, you know, all these combinations can go ahead and make up patterns. like. The virus shawl, for example, like this is called a pattern and it's a repeating pattern of um, about four different rows to make this lovely intricate design. This guy is just basically all double stitches and that's it. I'm basically using one stitch to do this entire thing, just in different combinations. Yeah, and a bunch of chains. And if you thought that math wasn't your friend and you're like, oh, I'll never use math. Math is worthless. Times tables are worthless. Um, math is probably the number one thing that helps you with crochet. Knowing your times tables is really important if you want to make little uh, crochet stuffed animals. Um, it's super helpful. And just counting in general um, is wonderful. So love your numbers because they can help with your craft life. Yeah. Another crochet hack. Yeah, math. Any other questions? Okay, how is everybody kind of feeling? Anybody have a successful stitch? Anybody feeling like, ah, oh, this is kind of awful and I'm struggling a whole lot. Yay! That's okay. I struggle every day. <laughs> and um, I will share a little story. I was trying to learn how to um, knit, which is something I am not good at yet. And there's the big thing, yet. Um, I went to a class. It was a 55 minute class um, at a community thing and uh, there were some kids about your age who got it her right away and I did not do a single like successful row of this purling and knitting and it was really beyond me and I even had a lady sit down with me two or three times and give me individual instruction and um, it was really, really difficult for me to understand the concepts, and I was just like, oh, this is for the beluga whales, whatever, I'm not into it. But I let it go ahead and sit for a day or two. I got on YouTube and um, worked a little bit more with it, and um, eventually I got to the point where I was able to do a couple of rows, and they were not good rows. They were the ugliest rows. But I did them. And then I did it again the next day. And I did it again the next day. And eventually my rows looked a little bit better. 
And now I can make a start. I can't do much more because I haven't invested a whole lot more time in it because I started doing more crochet stuff again. But the thing is, like, it is new to you. You will get there if you want to keep going. So let's go ahead and try a couple more of these guys. And it's okay if we're not getting it because I do not get things the first time. Ooh, we have a question. How do we unmute people? Oh, yeah. Can we? Who who had the question? I see a little hand raised, and I don't know how to. Unmute yourself. She has to unmute herself. Stephanie, yeah. can you unmute yourself? Mayana. Can I share my crocheting? Yes, please do. This is what I have so far. It looks amazing, and I'm so proud of you. This is great. I'm going to turn off my light so I can see you. My mom better. did a lot of it. You know what? I needed help from my Oma so much, and I think that looks amazing. Can I see it again? It's a headband. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Oh, fabulous. Anybody else want to share theirs? Even if it looks a little wonky, that's totally cool. Ooh, yeah. Just put them all on your forehead. Just get weird with it, guys. Put mine up there too. Why not? Hmm. I feel good about it. Now, I have a question because I don't understand how to look at everybody at once. Oh my goodness, there's so many more of you. Okay, there it is. It's in gallery view. Aha. Oh my goodness. Bean, look at you go. <laughs> That thing is huge. That's amazing. Oh. So how is uh, Imagine and Dragon doing over there? Feeling good? Ooh, yeah. look at that. Nice job. That looks awesome. Fabulous. How about Luna? How are we doing being left-handed? I'm going to... I'm going to be doing a Zoom with her and teaching her how to do it left-handed. Oh, it looks good. And that's awesome. And Miss Piggy, you're wonderful. <laughs> Should we go ahead and uh, try it left-handed um, by flipping my camera? Pickle would like to have everyone hold theirs up so that she can take a picture. Ooh, that sounds lovely. Ready? All right. Phoebe and Bean. Hold yours up. One, two, three. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. How's Pickle doing? Are you crocheting? We have our yarn. Our, our yarn is at home. And we, oh, um, I didn't get up. I was going to get up early and go get it, but I did not do that. You know? I slept instead. This is a safe place. And that is okay. <laughs> he slept on the couch and not in a bed. Yes, because Aww. he thought that me and there were four teenagers in one bed. <laughs> I, th there's two, two bedrooms in our beach cabin, and I was leaving the beds, like two, one bed for two teenagers, and I slept on the couch, this couch that we're sitting on, but all the teenagers slept in one room, in one bed, one double bed with four teenagers. We all leave sideways. Sideways. Well you know, they don't need as much sleep at that age anyway because of the energy drink. Oh, yeah. I don't know. That's the other thing is the other bed is much bigger, and that one had nobody in it last night. <laughs> yeah, but we all kept each other warm, so it's okay. Devin, why didn't you tell us there was a bigger bed? <laughs> I thought she was going to sleep in it. Oh. On the couch. Yeah. Well, now. I heard you <laughs> <laughs> You're all stronger for it. It's okay. Yeah. And so we are without yarn right now. But we will, we will okay. do it later. And Devin, <laughs> you have a crochet? I believe she learned how on a Girl Scout trip on a bus. That was knitting. That was knitting. I lied. I used to crochet on the bus every morning when like, oh. I was like in third grade. And I bet that was amazing. Oh, that makes my heart sing. 
The summer going into seventh grade, I did a Girl Scout trip from Texas up to New York City, and we also went to Connecticut. And on we were we had a bus, and on that bus we watched a bunch of videos. In one of the videos we watched, we learned how to knit, and so I learned how to knit on a bus with wooden crochet or wooden knitting needles. wooden knitting needles. Ooh, I do love wooden knitting needles, or they do make wooden uh, crochet hooks too. Slides so good, and they're nice and light. <laughs> I learned, but I learned how to crochet at what's that thing you do? It's the thing that nobody took me to drive this year. Oh, at all experience? No, Northern Lights. <laughs> yeah, at Northern Lights. I did a crocheting class there. That's awesome. Yeah. Nobody took me to go driving. Oh, well, well then. <laughs> One of your classes was canceled. And so One of mine was canceled was canceled and so I didn't have anything to do so I just hung out with nobody. You know, nobody can be a really good friend to hang out with all yeah, the time. <laughs> it was really did Phoebe finish uh, a row there? How are you doing there, Phoebe? <gasps> Did you wind up doing some stitches? I took over. I uh, stole mine, so. Fair enough. You show her later. All right. Um, any other crochet questions before we kind of shut down the uh, meeting here? I just want to say my grandma tried to teach me to crochet when I was about seven or eight years old and I learned to crochet a chain stitch and that's where my education stopped and over the years I've tried to figure out a little more here and there but I've never managed it. I've never managed a second row until today so thank you very much. Excellent. <laughs> it only took 35 or so years. Well I don't even like teaching the uh, chain stitch because I know that once you get to the point where you can do a single stitch, it's much easier to learn how to chain. So I will leave that for later and just have you guys just have a really good start for, you know, a foundation for how to make the stitch. And I think that that's a lot easier. Look at you! Just cruising right along. I'm so proud of everybody, just so you guys know. All right. And with that, I believe in each and every one of you. Um, if you are wanting to go ahead and rewatch this video, I know that we do that because we record it, right? Yep. And then on top of that, if you go ahead and grab an adult um, to help you, I would suggest looking up Bella Coco, one of the absolute beginners on um, YouTube. And she's a nice little British gal and she's mm -hmm nice and she works very very slow and she does the um, chain stitch for how to start the crochet projects and then she also does a good introductory video for how to do uh, single and double crochet as well so that's who I think is a really good resource and to start crocheting you do a slip knot you right. do do a slip knot. Knots are very important in crochet. <laughs> but, I don't even remember what it was. Yeah, it's a slip knot, um, and people like to start them in all kinds of ways. And then um, you just do that little chain thing that we did at the end of our um, row. You just do that as many times as you need for how long your project is going to be. Plus one. More chain because that's the one that you're using to turn your project around. That doesn't probably make a whole lot of sense for most of us right now, but if you remember that going into your life later and you're like, oh, now it makes sense. Yeah, it will make sense later. <laughs> awesome. Any last moments? Yes, we're looking at frustration out all of that. <laughs> all right. You guys can start logging off now. Beautiful. Have a good night or morning, afternoon. <laughs> Bye. It's been a pleasure. Bye. Bye. Bye.
I try to move, but I. Bye. And Rosa Moonfire, just send me a text, and then we can organize when I will do the Zoom with you. Awesome. All right, bye.